the most strong desire of individual is to have some kind of human connection. You have to realize there's more than you, more than me. And I think having that realization that you are not alone on the life's journey empowers you to be a contributor to that collective experience. What we're committed to is understanding the rich diversity of sexuality that exists throughout the world and to do it in a way that is fearless. Kinsey was trying to map the history of the whole field of sex research. He is a collector and classifier of species. In his era, biologists come to the fore analyzing social problems after World War I. Sexual behavior in the human male is known as the first Kinsey Report, 1948, right after the war. Sexual behavior in the human female, 1953, right in the middle of the Cold War. The ones that cause this place to be known about are those two first ones. Very different atmosphere of reception, in fact. And what it did was tell Americans that they were not who they thought they were, that, that there was a, a huge range in sexual activity. Even just the starting of the project, it just drops a bomb on ways existing sex research had been done. But it had to be tested, it had to be funded, and above all, he said it needed to be on a big scale. Dr. Kinsey left us with an extraordinary legacy and an extraordinary responsibility to conduct research in a way that is thoughtful, that respects the people that are sharing a piece of their lives when they are a participant in our study. Our outreach ranges from curated art exhibitions, using materials in the Kinsey Institute collections, our fine art, our photography, our archival letters. Many of us often teach students here at IU. We are deeply committed to training the next generation of research scientists and scholars, of helping provide students with hands-on experience with using different technologies, answering complex questions, often about privacy and confidentiality, understanding human sexuality in many different dimensions. We have a, a fantastic, amazing collection. It is the largest and oldest collection that's dedicated to studying of sex, gender, and reproduction. It has grown from 15,000 items to over 600,000. Our collection really is a collection about people's lives and stories. We often like to say one of the things we're grateful for is people sharing with us either their time, their talent, or their treasure. I often want to ask how they define their treasure and what it means to them. When we're fortunate enough to be the stewards of people's treasure, that can take uh, different forms. Sometimes those are important materials, their archives, their photographs. Um, sometimes they're data sets from important scientific studies that have been done. Other times they're financial gifts that help support the very foundation of the Kinsey Institute. Understanding the motivation of the donor empowers us to take the best care we can to preserve them, to organize them, and to promote them. To honor those gifts, to steward those gifts. And those are the things that really help us be the best and do the kind of work that we want to do that can really impact people all around the world. I hope that the Kinsey's legacy will really allow individual to create that safe space for them to explore their sexuality. To continue to be a pioneer, to continue to ask difficult questions. Strive for diversity and inclusivity. Our hope is making our collection relevant, useful. Honest, genuine, non-judgmental findings and interpretation of those findings is what we have done so well for the last 75 years, and it's what I hope we will continue to do for many years to come. <laughs>